One of the biggest causes of personal stress in today's social world is economic. Money has become so essential in today's social survival that it has become one of the biggest sources of stress for many people, especially if we do not know how to handle money. So today we're talking about the mistakes most people make with their money that no one seems to talk about and how to solve them. If you like videos about business, money, and psychology, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to not miss any of our value-packed videos. And let's get started. Number 1. The Hope Strategy A big mistake many people make is to use hope as a financial strategy. Here's what I mean. Many people justify their spending habits by believing that one day they will make lots of money and all of their financial problems will go away. As silly as this might sound, this is a very real thing for many people, especially those entering the entrepreneurship arena. As entrepreneurs, we have this vision of how our lives will look like as we grow our business and in many cases, many entrepreneurs start spending money as if they already make the money. We see all these other entrepreneurs making lots of money so we think to ourselves, I'll start a similar business and I'll make so much money and it'll all be fine. But this is a false sense of security that causes people to spend more than what their current budget can afford and end up with no money or worse, in debt. I see many people fall in the trap of buying luxury items to make themselves appear more successful before actually becoming successful, which can be a very dangerous trap. The reality is that unless you win the lottery, which is very unlikely, or you make some risky investments that could make it big, it is not likely that you will make lots of money very fast. Although you can build a good income fairly quickly with the internet today, you should not base your current expenses on the hope of a good income tomorrow. Number 2. This might come as a surprise to you, but most people do not have an income problem. They have a spending problem. We are all bombarded with millionaire lifestyle pictures, top tens, the rich lives of celebrities and influencers, and all of these luxury visuals that have turned into its own culture. This culture makes us think that in order to be included in this millionaire lifestyle, you must have all the cool toys. So we buy into it and start buying the shoes, the expensive clothes, the cool cars, the latest phones, even if our income isn't very high yet. The problem with this millionaire lifestyle culture is that they do not show you how the average millionaire actually lives. If you take a look at real millionaires, the reason they became millionaires is that they did not spend more than what they needed and instead saved and invested the rest, especially when their income was still low. The reason why millionaires have millions was because they put away the little they had and used it to create more money. This can be even more dangerous if you are already making a decent amount of money. There are people who make $200,000 a year that feel the need to hold a certain image because of their income. So they spend most, if not all of their money on fancy apartments, leasing Ferraris, taking expensive trips, and end up with a lower net worth than someone who makes $70,000 a year but is able to live on 40% of their income and save and invest the rest. Because most people do not have an income problem, they have a spending problem. Number 3. Holding Cash Another big mistake many people make is keeping their money in a bank account or worse, in cash. Before 1971, the US dollar was on what is called the gold standard, which basically meant that money was backed by the gold reserves the country had, so money back then had an actual gold value. After 1971, the dollar now is what is called fiat money, which is not backed by any commodity and is only backed by the government issuing it. This means that the concept of inflation now exists, which means the value of money decreases every year. This means that if you hold cash in the bank account, your money will actually lose value every year. This is why saving money is not the only step for financial wellness, but also investing your money on places that have higher returns than inflation. By investing your money on simple things like index funds, you are also taking advantage of something called the compounded interest, which is the addition of interest gain to the original principal. For example, if you have $100 at a 10% annual return, you will make $10 this year. Those $10 are added to the original $100, which means you now have $110 at a 10% return. This means that next year you will not make $10 anymore, you will make $11. And in the following years you will make $12.1, the following year you will make $13.2 and your return grows every year. Now this not might sound like a lot in the short term, but the biggest weapon of compounded interest is time. 
a really good illustration of how powerful time is with compounded interest is the question, what would you choose? $1 million right now or one cent that doubles every day for 30 days? Many might choose the $1 million right now without knowing that one cent that doubles every day ends up being over $5 million at the end of the 30 days. The funny thing is that you don't see much of a difference until the last 10 days. At day 15, you only have $163, not even close to the $5 million. By day 20, you have over $5,000. By day 25, you have over $167,000. By day 27, only two days after, you've got over $600,000 not even the million. But the next day, you have over $1.3 million and by day 30, you have over $5.3 million. And that is the long-term power of compounded interest. This might not look super exciting at the beginning, but it can create a massive difference in your finances in the long term. For example, if you're able to save and invest, let's say $400 a month, which is $100 a week, with a return of 8% per year, which is the market average, starting at 20 years old, by the time you are 60, you would have saved $192,000. But the compounded interest on those $192,000 will give you over $1.2 million. So getting started on investing, even on passive forms of investing like index funds, might be a good idea. So consult with your financial advisor before making your financial decisions. A very good book I recommend on this topic is Unshakable by Tony Robbins. Number 4. Investing Before Paying debts. This might sound like the opposite of our last point, but if you have debts with high interest rates, then it might be a good idea to pay off the debt before you start investing. For example, if you have credit card debt, which is typically around 20% interest rate, and you only pay the minimum payment and put the rest of your money into an investment that gives you an 8% annual return, then you are losing money. Yes, you are investing, but your debts are compounding at a higher rate than the money you've invested. This is where compounded interest works against you. Those credit card interest rates are also compounded, and many of them compound on a daily basis, not a yearly basis like most investments. So if you have high interest rate debts, you should pay those off first before you start investing. Number 5. Not planning for medium term expenses. Something that most people do not talk about is planning for medium term expenses. Most people talk about planning for your monthly expenses, but what about those expenses that you will have 3 or 4 months down the line? For example, do you plan your end of the year holiday expenses in August? Most people get financially hurt after the holidays because they do not plan for these expenses a few months ahead and instead use credit or dip into their savings. By thinking about your expenses two, three, or four months ahead can help you better prepare to handle them when they arrive and avoid any surprises. Number six, not saving money to help you think long term. If you are living paycheck to paycheck or even living on the negatives, you know the stress of having no money. This stress puts you in a short-term mentality where your natural instinct is to find ways to make money right now. When you are in this short-term mentality, you're not thinking about your long-term financial plan. A very important reason to start putting away money that people do not mention is for your brain to go from short-term mode to long-term mode. A good idea is to start putting away a few months of living expenses in a savings account as a safety net for you to not feel stressed about money. This will allow you to start thinking about your financial plan in the long term since you will no longer feel the pressure to play the short term game. This will allow you to have a clearer look at your financial future, whether that means start investing and developing skills or putting away for retirement. Number 7. If you're in a job you don't necessarily like, the next mistake is not starting a side hustle. There are crazy statistics that reveal that most people, at least in the US, do not enjoy their jobs. The crazy thing is that people complain about how much they dislike their jobs but do nothing to actually change it. With today's technology, it's easier than ever to start a side hustle that you actually like and begin making money with it. Eventually, you might be able to actually leave your job to do something that you actually enjoy. So if you're in a job you don't like, start a side hustle, start an online business, use your interest to start a YouTube channel, provide a service to people or businesses in your local area. Do something that will help you move forward towards your financial goals. If you don't like your job and can't see yourself in the same place for the next 20 or 30 years, do something about it. Number 8. Not learning about investing. 
One of the biggest things that stops people from investing is fear. The lack of understanding about the financial world keeps people in the dark about how to actually invest, which leads to fear of losing money and never develop the skill of turning money into more money and even the potential to become financially free. For many people, passive investing like having money on a safer index fund is enough to put away for retirement, in which case it doesn't require a super sophisticated investment knowledge. But there are others who want to become more active in their investments and allow for a much higher return. In that case, learning how to invest is a must. Investing is like learning how to ski. You see others do it and it seems easy. Then you jump in and you start falling over and over again. Then we might just turn around and leave thinking that we are not very good at this. But if we stay and take the time to learn and practice, we start to get the hang of it. Alright, out of the 8 mistakes in this video, which of these will you be working on? And if you haven't seen our video on the 6 most common money mistakes you could be making, make sure to check it out here. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.